What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out biggest WWE entrance theme downgrades. Now we've seen some downgrades of some wrestler theme music. Um, me personally, one of my favorite uh, wrestling theme uh, music is Kane's, his old theme music. And when he turned sadistic and lost his hair, y'all know, if you know me, that's like one of my favorite wrestling theme music. And I don't know what happened. I'm not sure if they, I'm not, I'm not sure if they wanted to, I'm sure it had something to do with money and rights or whatnot, but then they changed it to like his old theme, but it, it, it wasn't as good as his original theme when he first came out as Kane. And it just, I don't know. It, it, it didn't hit the same. It, it did not hit the same. And you, you kind of have seen that not just with him. I, that's just an example I can think of off the top of my head. But there's other wrestlers where you feel like their theme music was better at some point and then it kind of fell off a cliff. Like DIY's theme music, I'm not a big fan of it. Johnny Gargano's new theme music, I like. I preferred it better in NXT and his new theme music before he, you know, they joined DIY, you know, did the DIY thing again. I don't know. It, it, it's, it's not the same. So I don't know, man. It's just one of those type of things where I, I do feel like WWE is cut made some uh shortcuts when it comes to their wrestlers theme music because at one point it used to be like as soon as you heard it you're like oh i know who's coming out and you know oh man it, you, you kind of felt some type of excitement now if you don't watch the shows regularly you really don't know who the hell's coming out until you see them outside of the the main stars and stuff like that so let's see which ones he has on his list um appreciate all the love and support took already enough on this intro Let's get right into this, man. Big theme songs over the years, and when WWE decides to change them, it really doesn't get a good response from the fans. No. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 entrance themes that were total downgrades. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you haven't already. Link to the video will be down below be in sure the description. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos. Number 10, Keith Lee, Limitless to Generic Jobber oh, Theme. Oh, yeah. To say that Keith Lee's Limitless theme song was good would be an understatement. It worked. The theme song was majestic, epic, and created an instant sense of excitement from fans. Yeah, it worked. Unfortunately, when Lee was infamously called up to the main roster, Limitless was scrapped in favor of a song that fans quickly labeled as a generic Jobber theme song. Keith Lee is here. The song gave Lee no aura, and it's hardly a surprise that his main roster push went absolutely nowhere. It's reported that WWE weren't permitted to use Limitless due to their deal with CFOs coming to an end. Yet this did little to justify why WWE produced such a lackluster theme song for a wrestler who was supposed to be one of the future stars of the company. Yeah. WWE would eventually introduce yet another theme for Lee, and this would be called Born to Bring It. However, by the time Lee debuted the theme, WWE had already seemingly given up on the once promising star. Mm -hmm. Number 9. The British Bulldog ruled Britannia to Bulldog when the British Bulldog returned to WWE in 1999, the company was in a completely different place in terms of how their product was presented. The Attitude Era was underway and the Bulldog's prior gimmick and presentation would have fallen flat immediately in this mm -hmm. new era. WWE would smartly give Bulldog a new theme song, however, instead of the classic Rule Britannia, Bulldog would now use a metal sounding song that was completely mm. lifeless and was arguably one of the most unmemorable <laughs> theme songs of the entire Attitude Era. Yeah, that's definitely generic. The most interesting as thing hell. about this new theme song was that it featured a bulldog barking at the start. However, outside of this, this theme song wasn't representative of anyone who was going to be a major player in one of the most popular eras in WWE history. Number 8, Carlito Cool to Bad Apple. Yeah, his old theme song worked. It fit. Ah, uh, yeah, that's that. Yeah, this deserves to be on the list. A former US and Intercontinental Champion Carlito made his highly anticipated return to WWE at the 2023 Fast Lane event. While it's great to have Carlito back in the WWE, there was immediate criticism because WWE had changed his theme song. I spit in the face yeah, of people this who don't want to be cool. This, it worked. It, it Carlito's worked. Carlito's first theme in WWE was symbolic of everything the Carlito character represented. 
yet his new theme titled Bad Apple was lifeless and rather dull. It's it's not bad, but it's not as good as the other one. Like I, it, it's okay. It has you know different similar vibes. I wouldn't say it's bad, but at the same time, it's not as good as his original theme song. So it wasn't just the WWE fans who weren't a fan of the Bad Apple theme, as Carlito himself had this to say during an appearance on the Ringer's Cheap Heat podcast. Yeah, I had a little bit. They ran it by me. I wasn't. They wanted to change it. I wasn't crazy about changing it. I like everyone else wanted to keep it. Uh, I liked it the way it was. But uh, you know, yeah. they said you know we want to change it ourselves, right? Let's let's see what we can do. And like they asked for my input here and there. Uh, I'd say you know, I, you know they gave me like the things that you know, okay, needs a little more bass here, needs more drums, little things like that. And then the the lines I wanted to change, but I didn't want the old lines from before. Um, and then it's 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 like I said, I wasn't crazy about it. But it, it also, I, I found myself like one of those earworms where I'd be humming it to myself during the day, you know, because they, they said it to you and you listen to it a thousand times and then I'd find myself just humming it here without even noticing. So I'm not, I'm like that too. I don't, I'm not crazy about change, but I think, uh, I think it's something that needed to be done and, you know, just to something, you know, put a fresh coat of paint on everything. Number seven, Stone Cold. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't, like I said, it's not bad. It fits still to his character that they're trying to portray. And back then he was a heel. So... Obviously, they had to switch it up in a in a, in a bit, but I mean, you still could have worked with it. I I would have preferred his other theme, maybe a modernize it just a little bit. But the the intro, spit in the face with people who don't want to be cool. You can still roll roll with that, even if they he is a baby face. I don't know. It, it, that one's not as bad. Steve Austin glass shatters to venom. The WWE decided to change Stone Cold's theme song in 2000 it was uh -huh. a very risky move. Austin's theme song was iconic and it could have led to severe backlash if the new theme wasn't up to the same standard. Classic right here. Luckily, the new theme from Disturbed was arguably Austin's most beloved theme song. Mm -hmm. The new theme kept the glass shatter at the start, yeah. yet the track now featured strong lyrics that perfectly represented mm -hmm. Austin's character and a no-nonsense attitude. When Austin turned heel and became a member of the WCW ECW Alliance in 2001, he would ditch the Disturbed theme in favor of a lazily produced track. I think I do remember this, bro. I think I do vaguely remember this. No, this was awful. <laughs> I think I do remember this, bro. <laughs> oh, bro, he brought back a horrible memory <laughs> nah this is awful this is awful oh my god i'm glad i i put this in the back of my memory jesus the theme song was titled venom and it was just a complete step down compared to what came prior did the theme song suit the supposedly paranoid leader of the alliance well that's up for debate yet fans don't exactly have fond memories of austin's time using the venom theme song yeah number six stephanie mcmahon all grown up to welcome to the queendom now, stephanie mcmahon's first two theme songs in wwe were certified hits a version of my time and then all grown up were tremendous theme songs that were exactly what mcmahon's character at the time needed I'm all grown up now, and I, listen to I remember this yo yeah. However, McMahon eventually decided to ditch the all grown up theme and in 2013, she debuted a theme song titled Welcome to the Queendom. This new theme was supposedly yeah. an indication that this was a new superior version of McMahon, yet the theme song didn't have the same energy as yeah. All Grown Up. <laughs> the new theme song was definitely a more mature theme, and it may have been out of place for McMahon to still use All Grown Up. However, they could have delivered something more memorable for a figure who was such a prominent fixture on TV at the time. Number 5. Sheamus, Written in My Face, to Hellfire Sheamus's Written in My Face theme is considered to be one of the more underrated theme songs of the PG era. It's a shame yep. It worked for him. WWE managed to hit Sheamus's first ever theme song out of the park. Yeah, it worked. It's hardly a surprise that fans for the past eight years have been urging WWE to bring the classic theme song back. Mm -hmm. Sheamus would get a new theme in 2015, and his theme was titled Hellfire. This wasn't this bad in my opinion. This theme isn't remotely bad as it only yeah. falls below written in my face in terms of production quality, 
Yet the consensus from the WWE fanbase is that written in my face was a better fit for the former WWE champion. He's admitted in numerous interviews that he wants to bring back his old theme. And that this would is what be he had cool. to say during an interview with Inside the Ropes. I definitely would love to bring that song back. Yeah. Before, uh, I know it was, it, was, it was stopped. They weren't going to let me have it. Uh, because it's past, but it's amazing what a song can do or entrance music can do to mm -hmm. bring people back in that nostalgia vibe. I definitely will keep pushing to have that song back. Hopefully you can. Um, and uh, it's something that I haven't given up on, but I think there'll be a time and place for that to come back. Number and I wonder if he's going to have Drew McIntyre in here. I wonder if he's going to have Drew McIntyre old theme song in here on the list. Because it definitely deserves to be on there. Compared to the one he has now, it's eh, it's okay, but his other ones, his other one, Nah, Drew's other theme, that one rocked. Before Baron Corbin, I Bring the Darkness to get ready ready. I Bring the Darkness was produced by the master of WWE themes, Jim Johnson. And the theme is notable for being the last ever WWE theme produced by the acclaimed artist. The theme song itself is universally liked by the yeah. fan base and it gave Corbin an instant presence when the song hit. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds changed, like it worked, WWE man. He eventually gave him a theme song titled Get Ready Ready. And this was just, this was just generic bull crap. It was awful. As soon as you heard this theme song, you just, uh. But if you had Baron's old theme song, you probably, okay, Baron's about to come out here. Oh, jeez, man. WWE and that cheapness. The theme song was supposed to represent Corbin winning big in Las Vegas and WWE took a rather liberal approach to the theme song. The theme song starts with a slot machine jiggle and then the rest of the theme sounds like an arcade. The theme song was heavily panned by fans and it currently has over 1,200 dislikes on WWE's YouTube <laughs> channel. Since returning to NXT in 2023, Corbin has debuted a new theme song titled Burn the Ships, which is a vast improvement mm -hmm. and hopefully the Get Ready Ready theme will never be heard on WWE programming <laughs> ever again. Hopefully. Number 3, Rikishi, You Look Fly Today, to Bad Man. Upon turning heel in 2000, it became apparent that Rikishi's widely popular theme song that he would use for the member of Too Cool would no longer work. You Look Fly Today was a fun theme song mm -hmm. that made fans get up on their feet and dance. Mm, hey, hey, that's a classic one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Rikishi now Couldn't use that no heel, more. A new theme was needed with immediate effect. Rikishi would debut a theme known as Badman, and whilst it's not the worst thing in the world, it was a disappointing theme that failed to represent Rikishi as a main event talent. I'm a bad man, give it bad man, bad yeah, it's not bad. It, it's not bad. But I get why they changed it. He was a heel, you know, so he kind of has to change it up. But it wasn't. It was it, The other one's better for sure, but it's not bad, bad. A lot of things went wrong with Rikishi's heel turn in 2000, and the theme song was a significant factor in why the presentation of a heel Rikishi just didn't work. Number two, Drew McIntyre, we Broken go. Dreams, to yep. Gallantry. Broken Dreams. Yup. When Drew McIntyre re-signed in WWE in 2017, his Broken Dreams theme was nowhere to be found. Nope. Instead, he would use the theme known as Gallantry. I mean, it's cool, but it ain't broken dreams, you know? It took some time for the fans to get used to the theme, and although the theme is passable for McIntyre, there has been an increasing demand to see McIntyre revert to broken dreams. McIntyre himself is fully aware of just how popular the theme song is, and he's been pushing to bring the theme back full time, yet it looks like WWE has no plans at this stage to make the change. Mm -hmm. But at the 2022 Clash at the Castle event, McIntyre would bring the theme back for his introduction in the main Which event. Which was cool. And this was the last time it was used on WWE programming. It was. Today. It was definitely cool. Dope and number moment. one, Kane, Slow Chemical. Yes. Fire. Yes. Slow Chemical is. Slow kids. I'm glad this was number one. It had to be. I said it at the beginning of the video. Oh, when Kane went heel, truly heel and evil. That Slow Chemical. Da -da 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 -da. Oh my god. Oh. So glad this is number one. It makes sense. Th this is that theme music, his original one, 
was good. It fit him. But when they took the mask off, Slow Chemical was him. It was as soon as you heard, heard the music and you saw the flames, you knew business had picked up. And then when he went to Corporate Kane or whatever, they kind of changed it back to some generic stuff. And then when he put the mask back on it, 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 was, it wasn't good. It didn't hit like it used to, man. Considered one of the most popular theme songs of yes. the past 25 years. Yes. Slow Chemical is sung by Finger Eleven, and yes. the idea of Kane having a theme song with lyrics seems like a strange concept, but it, yet worked. it worked amazingly. Oh my God. It's without question one of the most iconic theme songs. Yes. In 2008, though, they made the call to drop the theme song after oh. six years, and there was negative backlash upon WWE making the change. His new theme would be titled Man on Fire, and it would be a rework of Kane's original theme. Yep. The new theme wasn't a total stinker, yet there was no logical reason to make the change. Yes. It just appeared that WWE wanted to cut costs and produce an in-house theme song yes. for the devil's favorite Yes, so demon. annoying. There you have it, folks. Ten of the worst. Instead of Vince putting money into these damn theme songs... He's putting money other places. Spending $14 million in other places. I'm not going to talk about that. You know, you know. Could have spent that money, 14 plus or however it was, was of the company money that he was trying to keep people hush hush about what was going on. He should have used that however 14 plus million, whatever it was, to keeping these rights to these songs. Because a wrestler is only as good sometimes as his damn interest mu entrant music. Ah. Ah. Comment down below. Let me know some other WWE wrestlers where you feel like their entrance theme music now is a shell of what it used to be. Let me know down below because there are a few. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys shown on the channel. Road to 150k and I'm still here in the speed of YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. See y'all next one. Peace.